What is going on guys? We are back with another video for Madden 23. It's been uh, a little a little minute. Now, I will admit I kind of glanced through this just to see exactly what I was getting into without actually like, you know, pre-watching it cuz then it's kind of like if something cool is shown, it kind of ruins the experience. Going to be honest, a lot of the stuff I'm seeing here is kind of the stuff I mentioned in my like beta reaction video. Which, now I'm trying to think back, was I even allowed to mention those things? It was a no capture zone, but was it no speaky zone? I don't know. <laughs> but of course, we're going to watch this thing, probably get demonetized on this, but, eh, whatever, dude. All that matters is we're having fun, right? In to the all -new video and monetization. I mean, what? <laughs> new features are coming to franchise this year. Today we're excited to share the details about free agency, motivation... Hey, 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 so I don't know how much I want to actually go back and, like, pause and whatnot. I think I will, because I don't want to go back into the video. I'd rather talk about it now. So, remember when I was mentioning the whole, like, uh, you know, the different motivations and stuff like that? Once again, I get it. It's very realistic, because that's, that's kind of what happens in real life. And I think it's a smart thing. As far as, like, how will this, like, make it more fun... I don't know if it will. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't know if it will. You're going to need to know more as well. The whole uh, idea of anyone can pick up and play may not be a relevant topic anymore as, you know, someone's like, close to Florida? Uh, where's Florida? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like okay, dude. Uh, but obviously, uh, you know, it is, you know, in more depth as far as a rebuild sense goes. I might not be touching free agency because this sounds like a disaster, but looking at some of the names, I don't know if it's just random or if this is what we're going to see in game, but guys like Derwin, McLaurin, and Metcalf, I don't want to see guys like McLaurin in free agency anymore. I, I don't want to see a team's best wide receiver by far go to free agency with no trade or anything like that. You know, that's one of my biggest issues. is isn't even like, oh... What what deters them from signing with me, who gave them like three mil more per year than the next team? It's more, I want the logic of the AIs to be better with just retaining their players. And it would actually be kind of sick to see AIs trade one, you know, among, amongst each other. Of course, that could also have an issue too. You're like, oh, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, Dak Prescott's playing for the Eagles now. That's... That's great. It's like, why would they trade him? Like, oh man, but motivations. Uh, hey, hey, of course, looking at some of these motivations, teams are more interested in this player during free agency because he's a mentor. Uh, boost weekly training XP for other players at their position. So they have abilities. That's something I don't think I knew in the beta. I don't remember seeing that, but they have abilities apparently as well. I wonder if there's like uh, a chance to make your teammates uh, like dev go up faster. I'm not sure, but uh, what else do we have? So Mark Andrews, contrast. I'm going to let him talk. Scouting. Hey, 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 relax. I'm trying to catch up with this. I'm sorry if I'm pausing too much, but I want to catch everything. Maybe I should just go back later, but here you can see create a contract, which is kind of interesting. Um... I don't know if there's... Uh, so, okay, you can see there's a scroll bar there. It says team-friendly. So, it's not going to be physically creating a contract. Like, I don't think you're going to be able to go like, okay, J.J. Watt, he's a long-term risk. I'm going to pay him a two-year 17. I'm going to put 11 of that in the first year and then six in the next. I'm not sure if you're going to actually physically be able to do that, but it seems like there are multiple tr you know, things. Team-friendly, which is high risk. I imagine high risk is like a... Yeah, the player is unlikely to accept... Um, oh yeah, great for cap space. I'm sure that's what players love to see. A deeper immersion. <laughs> we focus on these areas. I'm trying to catch up. Respond to player feedback with the goal of enhancing the realism, authenticity, and fun within the. Mode. Okay, so uh, the one thing I need to see though is relocation teams. Once again, I mentioned it a billion times. Not everybody has a great PC to be running, uh, you know, Madden on, or even wants to play Madden on PC. Sports games on PC, I'm not. Not really sure the appeal there. Once again, you can play with a controller or whatever. That's, I mean, you're not going to play with a mouse and keyboard on PC. But, you know, not a lot of people are playing on PC, especially when it's not even next-gen still, I believe. You know, give us some relocation teams. We don't have the ability to create the, like, uh, you know, the the Las Vegas lingerie squad. You know, half the freaking team's wearing, like, just bra and panties because you can mod whatever the hell you want. You know, I, I want some re new, you know, new relocation teams. It would take probably less than like a weekend to you know knock that out. 
could literally hire some random guy on Fiverr or something to create them. It would take no time at all. Just just do that, especially since it was promised last year. Uh, but let's get into more of it. I've, we're 20 seconds into the video. To emulate the same level of drama and fun that fans experience during the free agency period each offseason, our goal with free agency in Madden 23 is a more competitive and rewarding experience for our players. Fair enough. In Madden 22, free agency signings were based on which team offered the most money to a player. In Madden kind of how it works in real life. Money remains a factor, but that's not the only factor. All new player motivations and tags add competition. Okay, so yeah, we mentioned this before. Process. They also drive decision making beyond just the money offered when negotiating. But I wonder how much of an impact. Like you see green and like like Super Bowl Chase playoff contender. How do they determine if you're a contender? Do you have to have actually made the playoffs last year? Or are they gonna base that off of your overall compared to the rest of the league? You know, stuff like that. Historic championship saints should be like a negative <laughs> warm weather state. I guess that makes sense. Fair enough. Motivations help determine why a player chooses. Also are they how realistic are they going to be like when's if um you know like uh we dk metcalf in the game is like i want to play somewhere where it's warm in real life he's like hell no i like the cold and, you know it's like that's kind of a lot to ask for so i guess we kind of have to give them a grain of salt on this one to sign or take it with a grain i don't think you give Let's anyone salt here with some real world examples Jarvis Landry just took an offer with the New Orleans Saints, yep. and one of his motivations to sign there was going back home to Louisiana, where he grew up and played college ball. We have the same motivation in Madden 23 called Close to Home. If a player has this motivation and you can satisfy Okay, you got to relax with that impact, though, just because it's a real-life thing. Like Another example, wide receiver Russell Gage signed with Tampa Bay. He actually got a recruiting call from Tom Brady. A few yeah, another reason why is they paid him thirty million over three to be a slot receiver. That that's also a pretty good motivator. <laughs> but yeah, I I, I like that. I, it's jokes, <laughs> relax. But yeah, that does make sense. Obviously. Antonio Brown and Rob Gronkowski all signed with the Bucks to play alongside Brady, a legendary franchise quarterback. Yeah. The last example is linebacker Vaughn Miller. He's a veteran who wants to win a Super Bowl first and foremost. That's Madden 23 Super Bowl contender. Motivation. I get that. I get that. Player motivations are going to better define where players go in free agency. So the decision is about. Oh, I speak. That's a good thing. They showed Mariota there. I wonder if they're going to have that. They should have it where. If you're a lower quarterback, that's kind of like a little older. One of their big motivators is having a vacancy at that position, right? Like that's that should be like a legit thing, or like a wide receiver doesn't want to come somewhere because he's going to be the number one target by far, and there's no legit number two options. You know, like uh, the, I mean, once again, we'll see what they come up with, but promising. Does he need to be at the top of the depth chart in order to sign? Yeah, fair enough. Offensive or defensive scheme. We even have a no state income tax motivation for teams. <laughs> My money chasers. Which is pretty cool. We're also introducing all new player tags that trade logic, draft logic. Okay. Logic, trade logic, draft logic. I just want to see the AI's trade. That's all I asked for. Let's walk through a few examples of player tags. When Aaron Rodgers wins the MVP award in Madden 23, he'll get the award winner tag. Is he going to get the playoff AI choke? To I'm sorry. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm a Packers fan. Relax. Another don't yell at me. Is called day one starter. We'll be placed above. Example is wide out Jamar Chase, who became the Bengals' top target on day one. Okay. With this, CPU teams will now utilize pro-ready prospects, moving them above similarly rated players on the depth chart to get them more ready. Interesting. So that's obviously smart, right? Like, Because the issue in the game is they just place whoever the highest overall is so they draft a guy that's like a 72 overall x-factor quarterback 21 years old but jimmy garoppolo is still starting because he's a 73 overall normal or whatever at like 473 years old obviously that makes sense right like you should start them but once again my issue isn't this kind of stuff it's how they're going to apply it like is it going to be based on youth and dev that makes them that day one starter because that's what i would assume but like this kind of only seems to be viable uh, for the current players in the league. Like, when's if you're four or five years down the line, that's where I could see issues come in, but we'll see. And progress. Because, like, how does this work? Like, player takes day one starter award winner. Is that not going to conflict down the line when, let's say, Jamar Chase is 32 years old, he's an 84 overall? Does he still have day one starter when there's other guys on the team that are better players, but they didn't get those tags? You know what I mean? See, I, I'm thinking. Logic, I'm thinking here. As a result. 
Weird Excel in jail, by the way. Team has a franchise quarterback. Well, I'm, just <laughs> I'm sorry. Relax. Is Bobby wearing 45? I guess he's a prototype. Fair enough. Place offers, manage free agents, few player under 50. Fair enough. It did look, and just in general, the uh, the UI looks better. It does look a lot cooler in general. Like last Madden really looked pretty awful. Player motivations are displayed in order of importance and can be either a positive In order of important importance. Status. Fair enough. Next, in the upper right hand corner, we have the market. So like should I just not bother if like I'm you know interested in the player as well I'm in Washington status. and he wants to play in Florida? Like should I just be like eh? Suck it, Derwin. You're always injured anyways. Whether or not you want to continue <laughs> a player. Below you can also see his expected market value, which gives you a starting point on what you want to offer for his contract. Another new addition to the free agency system is the introduction expected of expected value for Deontay Johnson, twenty-two million. Oh my God! To the of no, you can have thank you. Given stage, in stage one, you have a max of five players you can negotiate with, so you need to be thoughtful going after those. Wait, 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 wait. That's kind of dumb, even though it's probably like a money thing anyways, but why would I be maxed to five players on day one? Is that something that's like proven in real life that can only be done? Like, when's if I'm the freaking Eagles of Dream Team days? I know they didn't get them all on day one anyways, I think. But like, when's if I'm just like, I got money burning a hole in my pocket. I'm in Florida, so people want to come here. I want to play. I want to pay every player. You know why do I? Why am I limited? Come on, man. As the stages advance, you'll be able to offer more players. So in stage two, you'll get up to ten offers. I'm still not sure player. why this and is a thing, though. Stage, you'll have an unlimited number of negotiations. Fair enough. We also added the evaluate offers button at the bottom of the screen, which allows you to place an offer without advancing the week, giving you more opportunities to Interesting. Back your free agent targets each week. Finally, at the bottom of the screen is where you can sort through the available players each week, view their player card, target your players, and make your offer. This could be tricky in a user league, though, I will say. Offer presets to help streamline the negotiation process. Player friendly, team friendly, neutral. I mean, neutral player may not accept. Close to market value. Very player friendly. Very player friendly. Overpaying for player. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, did he say? Wait, wait, wait. Did he say this was like a force thing? Sort through the available players each week, view their player card, target your players, and make your offers. We've added four new contract offer presets to help streamline. Presets, the fair enough, fair process. enough, fair enough. And a top community request, new rollover cap allows you to carry over unused cap space to the next year. We've taken the top request from player feedback to rollover. Is that even a thing in real life? First. We've added more scouts to the pool so you can get information on I don't care. To optimize your I don't care. No matter what your team needs are, you can now find and hire scouts that are experts at evaluating any position. You can also now scout multiple positions at each stage to unlock information on more prospects in less time. In Madden 22, as you scouted a prospect at any given position, attributes and ratings were revealed randomly. Yep. For example, if you were scouting for a QB, a rating like break tackle might have been revealed early in the process. But that's not an important attribute for QB. Yeah, who gives a damn? In Madden Correct. 23, we've added weighted attribute reveals. Now, the ratings that matter most to the Whoa, this guy's a god. Are revealed first. For example, throw power and throw accuracy will be revealed. See, I understand, right? I get it, but the idea behind the randomness is that you want to learn more. Maybe they'll get into it. Maybe I'm just jumping the gun here a little bit. You want to learn more about a player. Why would you do... Like, I've already known that this guy's a god. I don't need to see his under pressure. I don't need to see his medium accuracy, and he's only 35% scouted. However, I wonder if it's the more you scout them, the more accurate it is. But at the same time, that kind of defeats a purpose because, you know, you kind of got all the ratings last year anyways if you did fully scout them. So maybe that's the – I don't know. We've continued to listen to feedback from our community and have tuned and improved other important areas of franchise, including draft classes, franchise hub, and overall immersion updates. We've added more than 30 new player generators to our draft classes okay. and tuned existing ones. Now you can find unique and fun players in every draft round. You'll Can I see Mike Vick? See generational prospects in the draft. Oh, damn! That guy is generational. 99 jumping. He's fast. He's 6'3". He's 21. I wonder who this is. This isn't. 
Julio Jones, is it? <laughs> player finds are rare. Let's see, wait, 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 wait. So 89 release, which is sick. 91 spec. 85 catching, 90 catching trap. Could you just, like, call him Julio Jones? Or what's the story? He doesn't have the uh, uh, rack ability, though. They come with a high Trait. Not that it matters. It's 86. 85. One of two. Valuable as you develop your franchise for it's juiced. That is fun, though. I, I do like that because it does happen in real life often, right? Like, Jamar Chase out the gate, if you redrafted him in the game, he probably would be like an 85 overall, right? Just out the gate based on how well he played. They need that because it is more fun. The question is, will it be super easy to see, which I imagine it will be, or uh, will they only be in the first round as well? I, those are two things that I want to know. CPU teams will place more players on the trade block and give you more offers. Via Player will be added to the trade team. block. We've also added the ability to get immediate trade offers. Without that needed to be that like that needed to happen. <laughs> but the problem is the trade block offers are always so garbage. Let's actually see the example. Sorry for banging the mic. Uh, Andre Dillard, he's like semi young. Sutton's not a terrible offer. David Long, Haley, and 2023 pick. It's not terrible offers, but we don't have a true example here. Adjustments to team needs logic ensures that teams are valuing higher rated veteran players and players with dev ben traits Mason. also have more value. This will impact how CPU teams draft. But why are we looking at offers. fullbacks? New CPU draft logic ensures teams are drafting the right players. And with new player tags, we've improved how each team Corner. approaches roster development. Quarterback. For example, the Jacksonville Jaguars who drafted Trevor Lawrence in 2021 yeah. as their franchise quarterback won't be looking to draft another quarterback and instead will focus on a different need. Now, Maybe not the greatest example. He had a pretty bad year. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, it, that was a huge problem, obviously. You can assign more abilities and create more variation for your players. And the most impactful abilities are now gated by higher overall ratings. Scouting UI. Now, here's the thing. I never really thought about that. And it's something that, like, probably only affects user leagues. Because it seems like a problem in the user leagues. But... Was, like, the editing of abilities actually intended to happen at any time? Because, once again, in a user league, typically, once you unlock that overall, you're stuck with it. Because otherwise, like, everyone will be like, I want evasive. I want, you know, gunslinger and all that. But, like, if they're going to make it like that, like, nobody's ever going to have evasive unless they start with Saquon Barkley, right? And, you know, they wait to dev him, technically. But, like, that, that's kind of a risk anyway, so... I don't know, it's kind of like a personal problem, isn't it? Sounds like a you problem. See, like, you see that, though? Like, that looks freaking cool. Like, last year's, like, main screen looked like dog crap. This is like, hey, a new Madden game, you know? It actually looks sick. I like that. Yep. It does, yeah. We've also made the activity feed on the left easier to use, and we've decluttered some of the text and improved. Oh yeah, for sure, dude. You you freaking off season starts, and it's like the whole damn game. You you you, you sign the whole league's practice squad. I can't see anything, you know. Come on, man. Experience. We're excited about all the improvements. Fair enough. I mean, especially for a game mode that. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't know. They probably have their stats. Thank you, sir, for telling us things. We we appreciate it, but um. You know, they probably have their stats on how many people buy Madden for non-Ultimate Team, um, which is still probably enough, right? There's still probably millions of dollars in franchise uh, just for the purchase of the game. Uh, but, you know, for them to actually still be attempting to kind of upgrade franchise, it's still good to see. Because once again, we all know the moneymakers, Ultimate Team, microtransactions have taken over the gaming world over the last, like, five to ten years uh, mobile games kind of being the first to do it, and then, f you know, Fortnite obviously being the one to, like, kind of accelerate that. I know we had loot crates in other games and whatnot, but that's, like, the big example. Um, so it's nice to see them upgrade stuff in Franchise and update it. Uh, I'm not really sure, like, the main thing that needs to be upgraded at this point, because, once again, if you're going to talk about gameplay, that's a completely different story, you know, situation. That is the core of the game. This is a different team working on franchise. These are features that have nothing to do with gameplay. Uh, so if there's things tied in with gameplay, that's kind of like a whole other issue. Uh, outside of relocation teams, there's not a whole lot more that they can do. Once again, I'm just hoping scouting looks a little bit better. I just also did, you know, kind of mention how... You know, if they're going to make it where the most important ratings for that position uh, show up first, it kind of defeats the whole purpose 
of scouting getting an overhaul, doesn't it? The whole point of scouting, uh, the scouting update, I thought, was that it was too predictable to to draft players. But if you're going to show the the most important ratings first, unless they're going to give you less percentage, which even then I don't know how that would work. You know, certain positions like quarterback and wide receiver, corner may be easier to draft than ever before. Obviously, O lines are rough because there's like. 400 different things that an offensive lineman needs for some reason, which makes it super unbalanced. It's like a pass rusher. Oh, I just got my power move or my finesse move up to 99. It's like the offensive lineman's like, all right, I'm going to upgrade my run block, my pass block, my pass block finesse, my pass block power, my run block power, my run block finesse, my lead block, my impact block, my awareness, my strength. It's like, how the hell are you ever going to keep up with the defenders, you know? Uh, But... Yeah, outside of certain positions like O-line, it seems like scouting might be too easy, which, once again, kind of defeats the whole purpose of them overhauling scouting. But yeah, it'd be nice to see like an actual draft process, the combine, but I'm not going to keep my hopes up for that stuff in the future. It is kind of like, as far as importance to me as a player, it really isn't that high because I like to get in and get out kind of situation, but I do understand where some people would want that because it's more realistic and it's more immersive, it's more fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, some good things, obviously they're more in depth than we probably would have expected with that free agency stuff, which is very realistic. It did seem like free agency was so boring and now depends on kind of what players go to free agency, but it is kind of interesting. It's like, you know, if you're, especially if you're in an online league, it's like, oh, you're lucky you started with the freaking dolphins bro, because Florida, you know, it's like, I don't really see there being much advantages if you're like one of the Northern teams, you know, it's like, who the hell is like, I want to, I, I want to pay more in taxes, get shot because of crime, and I love the cold. It's like, I don't know if that's, you know, but of course, regardless, let me know what you guys thought of this in the comment section below. Can't wait for it to get demonetized. Not sure if I'm actually uploading this today or maybe saving it for tomorrow. Kind of depends on what I'm feeling, but that's about it. Obviously, a lot of this stuff I mentioned in that beta video I did. Hopefully, this video is not too long. It's, which it absolutely is going to be. But that's about it. Uh, whether it's today, Friday, or Saturday. Uh, Saturday we'll have uh, at least the draft for our uh, Nighthawks franchise. And if this is Friday that I'm uploading this, today uh, we might have another video, like an experiment, kind of like how long does it take some team to win a Super Bowl or maybe another career resim or something like that. But that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys come back for next video. But until next video... See ya!